All right, folks, I know it does seem very early talking about next gen PlayStation 6 and the next gen Xbox, but it has been a very fascinating topic lately, which is Sony being a lot more open about this AMD collaboration that they're doing, Project Amethyst. And there's been this discussion surrounding what does Sony really get out of that when they've been very open about this during every time they talk about this collaboration and that it is for everybody. For the wider development community, they want this to be a rising tides lifts all boats scenario. So why is Sony getting so involved when realistically it's not something where they're going to have exclusive rights to certain GPU features? You know, that most recent talk, they announced what we assume are key principles for not just the AMD roadmap, RDNA 5, but also PlayStation 6, Neural Rays, Radiance Cores, Universal Compression. Back in the day, PS3 and under, those were consoles that were very bespoke, where Sony would design the SOCs in a very purposeful way, and you would get these very unique architectures much so like the PlayStation 3, obviously, that's our biggest example where it's this asymmetric multi-threaded architecture might be a pain to make games for, but it still uses regular coding languages and you can still get a lot of performance out of it with enough technical know-how. So there's always those trade-offs, obviously, but you know, back in the power PC space, I mean, that's just sort of how it was and that's where it came to a head on PlayStation 3. The fundamental shift in the console marketplace with Sony in particular was PlayStation 4 and that was Mark Cerny, who we've seen in these recent discussions, talking about what we, again, assume PlayStation 6, they're not going to say it, they're not going to talk about this handheld either with this power saver mode that we, you know, may or may not be uh, applicable to the uh, handheld, that's not really a thing just yet, but you know what I mean, Mark Cerny's been a driving force in the PlayStation business uh, for decades, but with PlayStation 4 in particular, that's where it's well it's well documented that around 2008, during the postmortem of PlayStation 3, he approached Sony and basically asked, "Can I be the system architect for this console?" That's Ken Kudragi now had he had already left the company now at that point, but um, you know Mark was then the principal system architect on PlayStation 4 and Vita that went into PS4 Pro and of course PS5, PS5 Pro, and we assume PS6 and this PS6 handheld. But his fundamental change in how he led the hardware platform was talking openly with developers. That was the one thing that was not really, they didn't really do that back then, to put it lightly. They would build the box and then ship dev kits and then people found out right then and there, oh, that's what this system actually is. They'd get documentation and things with it, but otherwise they wouldn't really know what they were walking into until the box was built. Whereas PS4 onward, they would have these surveys sent out, they would do site visits to studios and just straight up ask, what do you want to see out of a new platform? And that's Sony saying, what do you want to see in PS4? And that led into PlayStation 5 as well. Those are what shaped certain elements of PlayStation 4 itself with the memory, for example, or even the DualShock 4. Certain studios are responsible for why we have PS4 the way that it is, and that extends to PlayStation 5 as well. So I find that this AMD collaboration might actually be a very brilliant idea when you start to consider that that's Sony, I think, sort of ramping up the idea of no longer going against the grain of the development community, now going with the grain on not just developers, but also the AMD hardware side as well. They've been partners since the PlayStation 4, and I think that Sony willing to embrace every aspect of the, uh, every vertical of the business, you know what I mean? So I think when we consider that right now, PC gaming has never been as popular as it has been. Uh, so many people are buying and playing games on PC, and I think Sony still has a lot of advantages for being a traditional console manufacturer. Their boxes are still always going to be closed boxes. The specs are set in stone, so studios shipping games on their systems will still always be able to know this is the SSD we have, this is the speed we have, these are the GPU features that we that we always have access to, and those are not always the case on the PC side of things. And that's how you tend to still have these scalability problems and uh, PC versions that are never fully optimized. There's obviously a amount of issues that could happen when shipping a game on PC, but these things tend to not be so much of an issue on the console side of things. And so it's still something where I find Sony is probably just completely okay with going with the grain of every aspect of what it takes to build and ship games and really elevating that to the point where when they're a key part of PSSR, FSR 4, the next gen versions of those technologies, and then neural arrays, radiance cores, universal compression, when they are intrinsically involved in building these technologies, PlayStation hardware will be a direct benefactor there. And so even if that is something where PC games will be able to use these things as well, 
Sony's going to have the closed box that's ready to go. And it will always have these things available to their studios. They'll have very thorough documentation to help studios build games on their, their next gen platforms. I just think that when you look at like what Microsoft is doing, for example, which arguably that would be the most PC friendly out of the bunch because they're going all in by making a low volume, more expensive premium box that will allow you to install their storefronts. It's basically going to be a Windows machine at the end of the day with a sort of console software layer or UI baked on top of it that you can break out of that install other storefronts that's what we keep hearing about that box but um it's weird i think sony sort of found a very safe middle ground here of how do we still ship something that is considered a, a traditional console not nearly as expensive as what microsoft is doing but still reap the rewards of the development community making more and more pc games nowadays like that's the thing pc has grown to um such a large uh it's, it's a large position nowadays right and Sony, I think, is is right to not try and work against that, but instead be a part of what it takes to make and ship great PC games, which is also making and shipping great PlayStation 5, 6 games as well. That's the, the idea, at least. Now, you might posit that we're already very homogenous as is across all these platforms, so what is this really going to do going into another cycle where Sony is directly involved in some of these advancements? But, you know, again, I, I sort of harken back to PS2, PS3. They're extreme examples, sure, but when you have only first-party studios really leading by example and creating some incredible things on those machines, no doubt, but you saw that third parties suffered. So whether it's that, maybe another example would be accessories for a platform. Things like the PlayStation Eye or Move, PSVR even, name whatever you want. But when you get more particular with a certain subset of features or accessories or initiatives that you want developers to utilize on your platform, you're asking them to do something extra in a lot of cases. I think the Sony really is sort of taking that massive leap of faith across the entire library of games going into a new cycle where it's a matter of making sure that all of these core technologies they're building and helping flesh out and these ML solutions, ray tracing, path tracing upgrades, they, they really want to make sure that every studio has the tools necessary on some of the biggest platforms out there, which will arguably be them and the PC space. They want these tools to be available for studios so that they're properly utilized. And Sony still does reap that benefit of, we have a closed box, the specs are set in stone, and you always know you can target these features on our platform, which may not necessarily be the case on PC. We know you're gonna wanna use them, and you might use them for that PC version, but we've got them there. You know, I, I always like thinking about that Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart example where, sure, that game did end up shipping on PC, but sure enough, because every PS5 ships with an SSD, the game does exactly what it's supposed to do with those Rift sequences. And you do get that stutter on PC, depending on the machine. So it's like a somewhat risky, but I think very advantageous bet of making sure that everybody gets access to everything that Sony has their, their, their toes in. But the direct effect will be a highly optimized experience on the PlayStation side of things. Mark Cerny is somebody that has been invaluable to PlayStation. And I would think that this is a, a lot of what he wanted to do going into the next cycle of consoles. You know, he made that fundamental shift with PlayStation 4 and that, hey, maybe we, we should ask the development community what they want when we start making these new boxes. And this was really taking it a step further. Remains to be seen if that would pay off for them, but I have an inkling that this was actually a brilliant idea on their part. Uh, anyway, thank you so much for joining me in this conversation, and I will see you all in my next video. You take it easy.